Hi, and welcome to section 5, Password Testing. In the previous section, we have learned how to write a basic web application brute forcer to help us with the resources discovery. In this section, we're going to learn different types of authentication methods that a web application can use, and we're going to develop our own web application password cracking tool with Python. In this section, we're going to learn how password attacks work, the different methods of authentication, and then we're going to start creating our password cracker with Python. The different methods we're going to cover are basic authentication, digest authentication, and finally, form-based authentication. Let's move on to the first video in this section, how password attacks work. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is password cracking, which is also known as password testing. We will cover the different approaches we can take when doing password cracking. And finally, we're going to learn about password policies and account locking, which is important when planning a password attack. Password cracking is the most common type of brute force attack against web application. It is an attack against the logging credentials and it exploits the fact that passwords are usually weak. Due to the fact that users need to remember them and they need an easy to remember word. Password cracking is usually done with a dictionary of known words, or more exactly, with the list of well-known and widely used passwords. These lists were created by taking the most used passwords from the list of passwords leaked from different online services. Password lists may also include variations of words, as those generated by replacing letters by numbers, like O with zero and I with one. When we plan a password attack, we have different options on how to do it. The most common and most used is the vertical scanning, which takes one username and tries all passwords in the dictionary. The second option is called horizontal scanning, which is basically the opposite of vertical. It takes a password and tests it against all usernames. This is usually done in order to prevent account locking after many invalid login attempts. The next approach is called diagonal scanning, and basically it mixes a different username and password each time, reducing the possibility of being detected or blocked. But sometimes that is not enough, and we need to go further in order to prevent detection. This is when three dimensional scanning comes into play. This is a combination of horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, but in this case, we have multiple machines that we can launch our request on, or HTTP proxies that will allow us to use different source IPs for each request. And finally, four-dimensional scanning is adding a time delay per request on top of source IP rotation or distribution. A password policy is a set of rules designed to enhance computer security by encouraging users to employ strong passwords and use them properly. The password policy may either be advisory or mandated by technical means, like forcing it at the time of account creation or when the password needs to be changed. The password policy could dictate length of passwords, case sensitivity, mix of lower and upper case, characters allowed, characters, numbers and symbols, reuse of past passwords, how many previous passwords you can't use. Blacklisted passwords, very easy to crack like password and 123456. And also, it can define things like how frequently you need to change your password and to lock the account after X number of wrong attempts. So, now that we understand how password policy works, we have to be careful when we launch a password cracking test because we can end up blocking thousands of accounts, and that could mean the end of the penetration test, and some problems for us. Again, this is illegal to a perform without authorization. In this video, we have learned about password testing, the different approaches that we can take when planning a password brute force attack, and how developers and administrators can define password policies to enforce security. In the next video, we're going to learn how to brute force basic authentication.